We are live once again in Arlington, Texas for Big 12 Media Days. This is your day-to-day BYU sports play-by-play. Great to have you with us. I'm Spencer Linton, teamed up today with Dave McCann and Jason Shepard. Cannot wait for all of you to hear this interview with Baylor head coach Dave Aranda, where he addresses some difficult topics. Recently lost his father, showed up at Big 12 Media Days. He discusses football and faith and how to balance those two very different things. Dave Aranda, the Baylor head coach. Coach, it's great to have you as part of uh, Big 12 Media Day coverage on BYU Sports Nation. We know that uh, Kalani Satake has great respect for you, and so we appreciate the time today. No, happy to be with you guys. We talked to uh, a couple of your players, most recently Blake Shapin, uh, your quarterback, and Jeff Grimes has been uber complimentary. And we, we now understand why. I mean, cool, cool character, um, great kid. But why do you like what Blake is going to do for your team as you push forward into uh, the next year of Big 12 play? No, appreciate that. Yeah, you know, in with Blake, you go back to the championship game, and we're playing Oklahoma State here, and um, you know he's starting that thing. Whatever the percentage was, I mean, whatever he was hitting or trying to hit, he was right on target with it. And for a lot of that year, that was Blake, you know. And then I go back to you know high school, that was Blake, and so the first adversity really that he went through was last year. And some of it was at y'all's place with just the crowd and the night environment and all of it. And so I think, you know, to um, to face that adversity kind of, uh, you know, there's a dark night in the soul that comes with that. And um, to really kind of look into, hey, these are the things I can do better. But then, you know, if, um, if it was just diversity, that'd be one thing, but then it's all the haters, right? <laughs> yeah. And it's all of the criticism and all of it. And so there's a great line in T.S. Eliot, and he says, you know, um, you know, teach us to care and not to care. Mm. Teach us to sit still. And so I think, like, you know, that's – I think of Blake when I think of that because I think, like, here's things that we can get better at. Here's things we got to care about. Here's all these other things, right, that – that are attachments that you don't need. You don't need to care about these things, but you got to build in the, in the storm. You've got to be at the center of it in the eye of the storm, sit still. Right. And so I think, you know, that is when he's at his best. That was the championship game here a couple of years ago. And so, you know, there's almost like a first naivete where you don't know, you don't know. And then, the, then, you know, it kind of hits you. So then there's a second naivete that you go through. And so I think for all of us, I know I've been through that a couple of times and then, to see him go through it in a real public way makes you want to root for him, you know. And so we're we're uh, we're excited about him and just the confidence he's playing with. And you know, there's times where he struggled in the spring with scrimmage or, and that in the beginning of it. But then, you know, whereas a year ago that would if he started struggled in the first quarter, then the rest of the scrimmage wasn't great. And, you know, this spring he starts maybe some struggle in a drive or something, right back and took off right after it you know and so like the that just kind of showed the growth of it like hey yeah. i see you adversity i see you old friend you know and just like this <laughs> yeah. and it's just way different than before it was the hideouts and the you know on the whole thing and so yeah happy for him man excited for him there's uh football adversity then there's real adversity mm-hmm. uh sorry to hear about the passing of your father this week no thank you um Yet you're still here. Yeah. Um, why was it important for you to be here this week in spite of a, a tough situation in your family? No, I appreciate that. Yeah, you know, um, um, yeah, my dad, I, you know, so love my dad. I'm going to miss him. I, you know, the, you know, he had stage four pancreatic cancer. And mm-hmm. so the, that, uh, my dad called me, this was back probably in May, and he let me know. Um, they say six months. Yeah. And, um, you know, was, dad was really weak from arthritis, medication, diabetes and things. And so he wasn't eating really during any of this time. And so it just wasn't, you know, they couldn't do any medicine for the cancer because it, that alone would kill him. And so I went to go see him and, uh, right when I found out and was able to spend some good time with him and, uh, we were on vacation, actually. We were in Hawaii, and uh, my mom called and said, Hey, Dave, you know, your dad's really is taking a turn for the worse. The the hospice person that was there at the house saying, Hey, if you want people to come and see him, this is the time. And so I'd set a flight right 
the next day to come. And then I wake up the next day and my mom called and that he had passed in the night, you know? And so I, I feel good knowing that I got to say I love him and hug him and stuff. Yeah. And, um, I, you know, I just, um, I think he'd want me to be here. You know, the, I leave right after this to go to California and, uh, you know, we have a celebration of his life on Sunday. And so there's going to be, he impacted so many people, man. I, you know, one of my memories of my dad is that, um, if we were to go to like a, um, you know, uh, you name it, uh, uh, a grocery store or, uh, you know, a, a car, a car parts store. It was never just straight home. We'd always go to an uncle's house or an aunt's <laughs> house, a cousin's house or always, you know. And so it was always just about family yeah, and just yeah. about, you know, connecting people and, hey, this is really, this is your history. This is who you are. And so all them people are going to be at this thing on Sunday. So it would be way cool for my, you know, my kids to see them all. And when I was growing up with my dad, like we never went on vacations. We'd just stay at grandma's house, you know. And so I just think, um, you know, I think one of the legacies is going to be just he was all about family from the beginning. And just yeah. that, you know, it's a great it's a great motivation for me to to um, I'm proud to be a son, but I want to live that life that he lived, too. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Baylor head coach Dave Aranda is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Um, you're very public about your faith and um, obviously going through a significant trial here, but uh, great to hear you talk about your father and, and overcoming what is, is a unique challenge of, of losing a parent. I've gone through it myself. It's it's hard to explain mm -hmm. until it actually happens. Um, but there's this spiritual connection that BYU and the community at BYU has with your perspective and with Baylor, and it's it's a unique dynamic. Um, what have your observations been of the Baylor and BYU relationship as now BYU comes into the conference with that faith-based perspective? No, very cool. Yeah, I appreciate your question. I think, um, yeah, the the you know athletes just aren't cogs in a machine; that they're fully formed in the image of God. That um, you know, sport can almost be like a playful worship. It can be an expression of who they are. And I just think like the, you know, what that's, so we talk a lot about true self and false self at Baylor. And, and you know, so what that's not is like, um, here I am with a mercenary's heart and whatever the highest bidder is, that's what gets my devotion. That's what gets my that's not, the, so it would not be that. And I just think college football now is just, uh, is almost overrun with that. Whether it's the, you know, the, the, the revenue that has to be, has to come by or the winning at all costs and just all of it. And so to keep your focus on just your people and just who are they becoming is a result of all of this, right? And how are they, solidifying their faith and how are they you know when you know yourself then you can be yourself so like i come into this room this is me i go into that room that's me i go into that room over there that's me we're not putting on you know acts or roles or any of that and so you know yourself you can be yourself then you can express yourself so a game or um, um, a game becomes an opportunity for pure performance where it's like this is me man right this is my no different than how many roles of Spider-Man has there been, but each actor brings his own thing to it, right? Or here's a song that's been sung by however many people, but this artist brings their own thing to it. I think that's what can happen. And and for you to to be your fully realized self is who you are with Christ and with God. And, so, and then, you know, to check yourself. And so like that, the check yourself thing might be the most, the, the thing that is where I spend most of my time. It's like, mm. you know, here I am, you know, I just had this conversation with someone yesterday, and uh, I was kind of getting pissed off, and I just didn't treat him. I didn't give him the full attention. I didn't, you know. But now I know what it feels like when that's coming up and coming up inside of me, and I didn't like it, and you know, I want to do better. And so here's, I I know what it feels like. So now next time it comes, right, I can handle that better, and I can respect the person I'm with better. Like those are like the self awareness of it is not like right or wrong, but you know, is it helpful or is it not? Here's how we can, we can, you know, 
we can get we can be better and so i I just think like um those things sport gives us the opportunity for like we were talking about with blake because guys go through the ringer man you know and if your focus ain't on that then they're going to go through that alone and that's a shame yeah that's fascinating i've never thought about football as playful worship in the Mm -hmm. way that's awesome and i've loved the connection last couple of years of not just playing, but obviously connections with Jeff Grimes and Eric Pateos, now the Barringtons, Caleb Lohner on the basketball team. And it's a respectful uh, competition. Mm -hmm. It's been fun. The game in 21, all the BYU fans I've talked to, including relatives, love their experience at the stadium and with the fans. In 22, Baylor fans expressed love Mm -hmm. being there. And those were two, especially 22, crazy game, hard Mm -hmm. to get a yard. I wish we were playing this Mm -hmm. year. Um, But what what is this relationship? perhaps look like going forward between these two schools in your opinion i think it continues i think uh defensively similarly similarly structured i think offensively for sure you know similarly structured and then i think um you know kalani i remember meeting with kalani at gary anderson's house um or first there's a there's a football clinic in maui i remember i was coaching in hawaii and um gary was there and, and um Gary introduced me to Kalani, and I was hanging out with Kalani. He's the like, coolest dude. And then <laughs> later, I, I'm coaching for Gary at Utah State, and uh, Gary would have the families over to his house, and Kalani would, like, always be there, you know? And so I'm starting to meet him and just get to know him better, and we're talking ball. And when I was at Wisconsin, Kalani came and visited. And so, yeah, there's just so many a-holes in the business that when you see someone that's not and is really trying to, I think like, um, was it Franz Kafka has a quote of like, you know, I, I, I showed up to the party with my real face and I'm ashamed to say that, you know, everyone else had their mask on, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's like to, to, to see Kalani kind of go through it is just, it gives me strength. And I think gives other guys strength too, that you don't have to be a certain way. Yeah. Coach, it's been great to have you on BYU Sports Nation. Uh, we look forward to the, the budding friendly rivalry that will continue between BYU and Baylor in the Big 12. And we appreciate how respectful you are of, of uh, our community and of uh, the BYU fan base. And we hope you feel that in turn with BYU fans toward Baylor. No, appreciate it. Thank you, guys. And go beat Utah. <laughs> <laughs> Please do that. Do it. Do it for us. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Appreciate you guys. Thank you all.